So last time we were talking about the laws of exponents, and now I want to look at the exponential function. <clears throat> so before we actually get started on talking about like the rule, how it's written, what the transformations are, et cetera, et cetera, let's take a look at some actual data. So here is a graph that I pulled from the Montreal Gazette. Uh, I believe this data was taken uh, from March 28th or 29th. Um, and this shows the confirmed COVID-19 cases in Quebec. So if you look here, you can see that the first of the beginning, very beginning of March, we had one confirmed case. And then it turned to two, and then it jumped to seven, and then nine and 13, and so on and so forth, until we got to about 2,500 approximately confirmed COVID-19 cases close to the end of March. Now, of course, the numbers have skyrocketed since then, but this shows a trend where it starts off very small and then it suddenly starts to increase incredibly quickly. And this is what an exponential function is. You may have heard the term, hey, my post has gone viral. This is the reason why we use that term is because we often use exponential functions to describe the spread of a virus. So viral posts tend to behave like a virus where they don't get very many likes at the beginning, but then they start getting a lot of likes and a lot of traffic and then boom, they're viral, they're popular. Now, if you notice, this has a bit of a curve here. Um, and with this particular curve, you're never going to go past zero. And the reason for this particular case is because you can't have a negative confirmed case of COVID-19. Um, the, the least you can have is zero. So there is an asymptote associated with this kind of function. Now there's only one asymptote and that is going to be a horizontal one. Let's take a look at the basics of your exponential function. So <coughs> the general rule is written as follows. So you have f of x is equal to your a times a constant. This is your base right here. Now this constant has an exponent of b times x minus h and then plus k. Now for this function, you cannot have a is equal to zero and your b cannot be equal to zero either because then it would not be an exponential function. It would be something else. If your a was zero, then it would be a constant function. And if your b was zero, then it would just be a linear function. So this is the base rule. However, it can be transformed into a simpler rule, which has this form here, where you just have your a, you still keep your base. Now the exponent is just to the x plus k. So this is still your base. Now, the way you get from here to here is pretty straightforward. It uses the uh, laws of exponents. Uh, so let's take a look at an example. I'll do it in a different color. So let's look at an example here. So let's say that we want to take this rule right here, which is five times three to the exponent of two times x plus one plus seven. And we want to take this, which is in the top form up here and transform it to this here. What we're going to do first is we're going to take this two and bring it into the brackets here. So it becomes five bracket three squared to the exponent of x plus one. 
Now, we can take this and we can actually square this. So 3 squared will give us 9. x plus 1 plus 7. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to distribute this with the 9. So we're going to have 5 times 9 to the power of x times 9 to the power of 1 plus 7. bring this up here because I'm running out of room. Now this we can't uh, really multiply with or anything so this is going to be our c and our x. So your c becomes 9 and your x is just x. The a however we can take this 9 to the power of 1 which is just 9. We can multiply it with the 5 in front which would give us an a of 45. So our a is 45, our base is 9 to the power of x, and then the k stays the same, plus 7. So that is how you would transform your rule. Now the reason we would like to transform our rule is it makes it simpler for us to use. Uh, and specifically, when we start talking about logarithmic functions, it is much more simple to flip between the two as well. Now, Something to note, and I'll choose a different color once again. This function, like I said before, has an asymptote. And that asymptote is at y is equal to your k value. This is your equation of the asymptote. So if we're looking for the equation of the asymptote right here, we know that the asymptote, whoops, is at y is equal to positive 7 because that is our k. Another thing to note, uh, let's go with a pink or a purple, sure. Um, you're very familiar with the number pi, right? We all know that that is approximately 3.14. Uh, and we tend to use that for circles and stuff like that. Well, there is another number that we will often use as the base for the exponent function, and that is Napier's number. I'll just, and that is e. Now, e is approximately equal to 2.72. And similar to pi, it's a decimal that will just keep going on forever and ever and ever. It's irrational. It will not... Uh, you'll never find a pattern emerge from it, uh, and this is often used as a base for our exponential function and eventually into our logarithmic functions as well. So these are things that you need to remember. So let's take a look at graphing. So let's go to find our graph. Uh, and let's do an example here. Let's say we have f of x is equal to 3 to the power of x. Let's start with a very simple one. All right. So the first thing that we want to do is we want to make a table of values. So table of values. And let's choose five numbers. Uh, I like to make sure that the 0 is my center one, so negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, and 2. The reason I choose these numbers is because, as you saw with this graph here, it can start increasing really quickly. So if you choose numbers that tend to go around 0, um, you're going to be pretty safe in terms of... Uh, not having to run off the page essentially. So if we wanted to calculate this, you'd have to put it into your calculator and make sure that you put brackets around your negative numbers. Uh, so there are two options. You might have a button that is y to the x and then you might have a button that looks like a little hat 
Now I have this little hat button here. I'm going to be using that to solve my, my, um, for my Y. So let's take the first one. So three to the exponent of bracket negative two is going to give me 0 0.11 repeating. The next one, three to the exponent, oops, three to the exponent of negative one is going to give me three to the exponent of negative one. It's going to give me 0 0.33 repeating. Now, if you take this zero and put it in the X, anything to the power of zero is equal to one. Three to the power of one is going to be three. And three to the power of two is going to be nine. So we filled in our table of values. Now it's time to graph it. Notice how we don't have a K value here. So our asymptote is going to be this line right here. This is our asymptote. It's the X line. So let's plot these points. So at negative two, I am just above, just above that line. Negative one, I'm slightly higher, but not quite. At zero, I have reached one. At one, I've gone one, two, three up. And at two, I will be nine up. So the curve, let me try to draw this curve here. This curve is going to look something like this. Now, of course, this last bit here is super tricky because you're not supposed to touch. Anyways, it will look something like this. And this is how you would graph your exponential function. Make your table of values, plug them in, determine where your asymptote is, draw on the asymptote, plot the curve, and there you have it. So I'd like to thank you for listening in, um, and I will see you next time when we start analyzing this uh, function, and we're going to look at things like domain, range, initial value, and variation.